In this video, we will be examining what is MongoDB aggregation. There are three different modalities, pipeline, MapReduce, and single purpose. We will examine each one in turn. Let's start with pipeline aggregation. The way pipeline aggregation works is that you have a series of related commands which are consolidated and pushed through in one single command, generating a uniform result set. As an example, let's say that we have a series of documents which represent the gross domestic product of a series of countries. As you can see, we have country codes and gross domestic product as represented in billions of dollars. We are now aggregating a series of three separate groups of commands. The output from one group will provide the input for the group which follows. We start by grouping by country code. We then produce a sum of the gross domestic product. The next set of commands performs a match based on specified conditions. In this case, we're looking for gross domestic product, which is greater than or equal to 2,500. As you can see, four of the countries match, two of the countries do not match. They are then dropped out of the result set. Finally, the last command in the aggregate performs a sort on the result from the match. In this case, we are sorting by the gross domestic product field. The minus one indicates the fact that we want this in descending order. In map reduce aggregation, on the other hand, we are able to run a series of three separate functions. The purpose of the first function is to produce a map of what is going to be processed in the next segment. The reduce function will then perform some sort of operation on the object selected by the map. The finalize function is optional and can be used to produce additional results. If we take a quick look at the documentation page, you can see we're looking at docs.mongodb.org slash manual slash core slash map dash reduce. In this example, the mapping function will cause the customer ID and the amount to be passed through in the form of an array. The reduce function will take these two values, one as the key, the other as the values, and then produce a sum. In the final portion, this is represented directly as a query which puts a further restriction on which records are allowed through to the final result. The output is then labeled as order totals. So in this example, we have four documents in the collection, which then come through as two and one grouped together. We then have the final results, which includes a total of the amount field. Single purpose aggregation, on the other hand, is represented as specific functions such as count, distinct, and group. Let's now move over to a terminal window on a server in which a MongoDB database is active. First of all, we issue the mongo command to get into the MongoDB database. This assumes that we do not have authentication active. In other videos, we will show you how to set up an administrative user as well as a database user. We will now use the sample database. First of all, let's examine the customer's collection. To do this, we will use the find command. As you can see, however, the output is not necessarily very useful. It might be useful, on the other hand, to do a count to find out how many documents there are in total. To do this, we simply add count to the end of the find. As you can see, we have 9,999 documents in total. We can also be more specific. In this example, we're looking for how many customers are male. The result is 4,974. The distinct single purpose aggregator is a way of grouping collections in a unique manner. Let's take a look at status as an example. So as you can see in this example, we have status codes of F, A, AAA, C, etc. It might be interesting to add a sort to this capability. We repeat the command and add sort. We now have a list of status codes in alphabetical order. The single purpose aggregate group allows us to take distinct information but perform some kind of processing. In this example, we are using the country as a key. We are specifying the country in ascending order. We then indicate what we plan to do with this information. In this case, we are adding the account balance for each 
current record, to a variable called BAL, which is part of the result. Finally, we are specifying an initial value for the balance, which is zero. Let's now have a look at the result. As you can see, we have a list of country codes with the cumulative account balance for all of the customers in each of those individual countries. So in review, pipeline aggregation groups values from multiple documents and lets you perform operations on group data returning a single result. It's similar to an SQL command which includes group by and having. MapReduce aggregation condenses large volumes of data into aggregated results in a similar manner. The difference is that you can define three separate functions, map, reduce, and finalize. The map function will emit a series of key value pairs. The reduce function will collect and condense the aggregated data. The finalize function, which is optional, will further condense or process the results. Single purpose aggregation includes operations such as count, distinct, and group. It's very easy to use, however limited in scope.